I'm going to tell it. I am going to tell it. Tell everyone you see, oh, tell them for me, Jesus is alive and well. I'm going to read from Mark chapter 5, verse 19, and this is the New King James Version. But a little bit of background, Jesus, it says that he went over in a boat to the other side, but he didn't come to a city, he came to a place of the tombs, and he met a Gadarean man there, and this man was uh, possessed with an unclean spirit, and he was tormented night and day, and Jesus comes, and Jesus delivers him and sets him free, and he's so excited that he wants to go with Jesus. He wants, when Jesus gets in the boat to go, he says, I want to get in the boat with you and follow you. I want to go with you, Jesus. But this is what Jesus tells him. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And the people were amazed. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. I thank you for your people that have come to worship you. God, and I'm just asking that you would bless them. God, whether they're here in the sanctuary or on Facebook Live, God, minister your presence and your love. Holy Spirit, go out now from this sanctuary and touch every heart and touch every life. We're hungry for more of you and let your word bring forth fruit in our lives. And the church agreed by saying, amen. and amen. God bless you. God bless you, Jordan. Let Jordan know how much we appreciate him helping us. And, and uh, Pastor Christy, you sang your heart out today. It was so, so good. Thank you for that. I was talking to Pastor Sisney at our district convention this past week, which was down in Fresno, California. And Pastor Sisney went through a dark season in his life. And for a year, he was in excruciating pain. He was extremely sick. He could find no help with any doctors. As a matter of fact, he couldn't find any help anywhere. And so he came to the conclusion what God didn't do for him, it just wouldn't be done. And the story is really much more involved than this because he and his wife went through so much more than what I could describe here in just a couple of minutes. But to make a long story short, after a long season of unexplained bodily pain and suffering, he told God this. He says, God, if you bring me through this, if you get me past this period in my life, if you raise me up from this affliction and this sickness, what I'm going to do, God, is when you get me through it, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell everyone I see what you have done for me. And then he looked me right in the eye and he says, I'm going to tell it. And when he said that, the Holy Spirit gripped me. I said, that's a sermon right there, amen. I am going to tell it. And he's done that. He's written 45 books that he has on Amazon, and in those books he tells the story and he tells a whole lot more, but he came and preached for us a few years ago, and he spent over an hour sharing with Naomi and I his amazing testimony, how God brought him up from the jaws of death. You may feel like you're at that point in your life, and I've got good news for you today. It's not over till it's over. We serve a miracle-working God. We serve a God that can do all things. Amen. And so what we see here is that God raised him up. Amen. God restored his life, and now he's pastoring one of our Pentecostal Church of God churches in Grover Beach, California. And as I thought about this, the Holy Spirit quickened my heart and said, we've got to tell it. We as a church, we've got to go out and we as God's people, we've got to tell it that God has been so, so good to us. He called us when we didn't deserve it. He chose us. You didn't choose him. He chose you. And he accepted you and me just the way we were. He came to us in our mess and started a brand new work in our lives. He forgave us of all of our sins. 
filled our hearts with his love and with his Holy Spirit. Amen. He gave us a brand new life, filled us with his peace, filled us with his presence, and filled us with his power. He blessed us with a new life and with a new purpose for living. And that's why he says, like Brian said a minute ago, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, that you may demonstrate what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God for your life. Give him a big hand clap of praise. And when we hear that, what we see is God says, my will for you, it is good. Never be afraid of the will of God. It is good. As a matter of fact, he says it is perfect for your life. Amen. And it is acceptable. It is acceptable to God. And it will be, <laughs> some people are scared God's going to force them to go do something they don't want to do. No, if God wants you to do it, he'll put that desire and that willingness in you. It will be acceptable both to God and to you. But because God has been so good to us and he has blessed us uh, extremely, amen, abundantly, then we have got to tell it. We cannot keep this to ourselves. We've got to go out and tell others. God gave us a mouth and an ability to speak. And I believe we need to learn, the key word there is learn, to speak more about the goodness of of God. We need to unlearn the language of this world. We need to unlearn the old language of this life. And we need to learn to speak the language of God's word, of God's blessing, of God's promises, and God's breakthroughs, and what God wants to do in our lives. God says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Boy, that's powerful right there. That means the words that we speak are very, very important. They can either bring life or death both to us and to those who hear our words. But when we speak the words of God, when we speak the testimonies of God, it always brings life, it brings encouragement, and it restores hope and strengthens our faith. We must avoid like the plague all statements that say things like this. Well, I don't know if things will ever change in my life. You might as well just quit. You might as well just give up. Things may look bad, but Elijah was a man of like passions like us, and he prayed that it would not rain, and it rained not on the earth for a space of three and a half years. If we pray instead of giving up, God will work things out. Amen. If we will pray, amen, God will turn the situation around. And if we pray, he says all things will work together for the good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. Amen. No more critical, judgmental words without grace. These have no place to be spoken by the spirit-filled child of the living God. So we need to open our mouths and tell it. We've got to go out and we've got to tell how good God is. Speaking words that lift up. Speaking words that when you speak with somebody and they leave your presence, they don't feel, oh man, why did I run into them today? No, but they leave your presence encouraged, feeling better, knowing that you have spoken, amen, as a vessel of God and have brought hope and encouragement to their lives. I'm going to tell it. This mouth right here, these lips of clay, I'm going to do my best to tell the goodness of God and be an instrument of worship. There is no higher purpose for these lips of clay than to praise and to worship and to thank God for all that he's done for me. Amen. So, number one, I'm going to start by telling God how thankful I am with my praise and worship. Before we tell it to men, we first got to tell it to God. And tell God how thankful we are with our praise and our worship. We are designed to give thanksgiving and praise to God. And I want to use my mouth to lift up the name of Jesus and praise him for everything he's done for me. Excuse me if I just say thank you Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I magnify you, Lord. Excuse me if I just praise him a little bit right now in this message. How about if I just say my God is a good God? You don't know how wonderful he is. You should serve him with your life because my God is so, so, so good. I praise you. I magnify you. I worship you. Excuse me if I just go a little overboard with a little praise, more worship, amen here this morning I love the psalm that Jordan sings he says I will bless I will praise you again and again come on my soul don't get shy on me so come on my soul don't you get shy on me lift up your song because you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord so I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again give the Lord praise in his house today Amen. Psalms 103 says, I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all, not part of me, not a little bit of me, and all that is within me. I like that. And all, I mean, I could almost sing, praise the Lord. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Amen. And in that verse, it sounds like David's having to talk with himself. Does anyone beside me ever have a talk with themselves? And it's like David saying, self, you need to bless the Lord. <laughs> and, he, and he's telling himself, You're, you need to bless the Lord, oh my soul, amen. And, you, and sometimes we just need to tell ourselves that we need to bless the Lord. Because sometimes we don't feel like blessing the Lord. Sometimes we got a heaviness about the enemy will do... Let me just tell you, God is so attracted. Just like I'm attracted to Rocky Road ice cream. God is more attracted to our praise and worship than Pastor is to Rocky Road ice cream. By the way, I snuck a little bit of your ice cream the other night, Jordan. Amen. You <laughs> and it wasn't even Rocky Road. Had it been Rocky Road, that he'd have been mad at me because I'd have eaten too much of it. Amen. God, did you know that, that, that your worship and praise and thanksgiving, that it attracts God? It's irresistible to God. And that's why the enemy tries to put a, a blanket over our praise and worship, tries to get us down and discouraged. And I just don't feel like... He, you have to push past your feelings, and when you do, you will attract the presence of God into your life, and you will have a breakthrough when his presence enters in. He says, in my presence, there's fullness of joy, and at my right hand are tender mercies forevermore. God will visit you, and God will lift you up out of that yuck. Amen. I call it a yuck anointing. The enemy tries to cover us with a yuck anointing, but we got to praise right through that and lift up our hands anyways and sing praises to our God, and it attracts the presence of God in our lives. And David explains why he's going to praise the Lord. He says, because I don't forget all of his benefits. He says, he forgives all of my sins. You want a reason to praise the Lord? Let me just tell you, he forgives all, not a few, all of our sins. Amen. And not only does he forgive all of our sins, but he does it again and again and again and again. He is a forgiving God. Amen. Can I tell you today, if you will confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And not only that, but he says he redeems us from the pit. Can I tell you what that means? That means he gets us out of trouble. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times God has gotten me out of a pickle. Amen. Amen. One time, Lindsay, she uh, was going to school down in Monterey. And that morning, I just had, had the, the inkling to check and see on the insurance on the car she was driving. And it turns out that it had canceled for non-payment or expired. They don't cancel us. But it expired, but no insurance. They, and so I had this inkling. I said, you better call and check on your insurance this morning. She makes a phone call, 
checks on her insurance. Oh, yeah, she paid it right there. She left her house and went out, and she smashed into a Mercedes Benz. Amen. Totaled her car. I don't know how much damage she did to that Mercedes. Amen. How many of you know we serve a good God? Amen. How many of you know I, she wasn't working yet? Dad would have had to pay for all that. Amen. And, and, and so he gets us out of trouble. How many of you, that, that got us out of a lot of trouble right there. And God can pull you, do you feel like you're in a mess? Man, I just don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to get out of that. I don't know how it's going to work out. Well, let me just tell you, how about we just say hakuna matata, cast our care upon the Lord and let him work it out because he redeems our lives from the pit. God will get us out of the jam we're in. Amen. If we will focus on worshiping, praising him and thanking him. And he says he crowds us with steadfast love and mercy. <laughs> Man, I tell you, we're not steadfast like God. Because some days when I'm around you, you're in a good mood. Other days, you're in a bad mood. I've witnessed this in line over here, even at the bagel bar. Amen. <laughs> uh, I'm speaking the truth now. Sometimes you come in like, oh, man, this is great. Other times you come in like. <laughs> Some days we, I think you love me. Other days, I think you don't. <laughs> Guess what? God's not like that. It says his love is steadfast. God's not in a bad mood one day and a good mood the next day. God loves you. Amen. Every, his love for you is steadfast. It doesn't come and go. It, it, it's, it's, what do they call that? Agape love. Unmerited love. Uh, undeserved love. And it never changes. And it, it, God's love for you is steadfast. And thank God. His mercy is steadfast too. Is there anybody besides me that needs a little bit of mercy every day? Well, guess what? Steadfast mercy means he never runs out. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so is his mercy towards those who love him. Do you love God? God says, if you love me and you serve me, I'm going to have enough mercy for you, amen, to get you to the other side. Thank God for his mercy. Give him a hand clap of praise, amen. I don't, I don't have time to talk about the ten lepers, but, but remember these ten lepers say, Jesus, have mercy on us, you know, and, and he, they want healing, and Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest. That's all he said to them. And it says, when they turned, in other words, when they, <laughs> a lesson on obedience, when, when they turned and did what Jesus said and started heading toward the priest, they were all cleansed of their leprosy. And I thought about how hard it would be to cleanse one person of leprosy, but he did 10 and did 10 all at once. Man, he's just showing off his glory and his power, man. I, guess what? He's got enough power to heal all of us, not just one or two. He's got enough power to go around for everybody, enough healing virtue for all of us. But out of the ten, there's only one who looked and saw and turned around and came back and fell at his feet and gave him thanksgiving and praise for what he had done. You see, I don't know about you, but I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell it first to God. And I'm going to ramp up my praise and my thanksgiving for all that he's done for me. If we would become more, uh, greater, stronger, more frequent worshipers, don't wait till Sunday morning when we come to church to worship the Lord. Do it when you're riding your bicycle. Do it when you're walking down the street. Do it in the grocery store. Do it in your home. Let's worship him. Let's thank him for all that he does for me. Secondly, I'm going to tell others what God has done for me. That's what Jesus told him. He says, go back to your friends and tell them what God has done for you. We all, if we are born again and we're serving Christ, we all have a testimony to share. Revelations 12, 11 says, they overcame the wicked one by the blood of the land that's being forgiven, being cleansed, being made right with God, but also and the, with the word of their testimony. 
In other words, Jesus forgives us and cleanses us. But we've got to learn to speak God's words. We've got to learn to speak about how powerful and omnipotent and how great our God is. Instead of, oh, this is such a, I don't, this is going to defeat me. There's no way I'm going to make it through this. This is the, no, no, no. My God, amen, I have hope because of who he is. He is all powerful. He has wisdom. And, and let me just tell you, God has at least a hundred ways you've not even thought of on how he can get you through the situation that you're facing in your life. God is able, amen, to deliver us and to help us. And we have to start understanding the words that we speak and the attitude we carry. It has a big impact on us. Yes, we're forgiven, we're cleansed in the blood, but if we want to make advancements in our lives, if we want to see our family saved, if we want to see victory, if we want to see financial increase, if we want to see breakthroughs, in our lives, then we need to learn to speak, amen, the word of God and to understand and tell people what God has done for us, what God is doing for us, and what God will do for us in the future. We need to have a word-driven testimony. And I, I thought about this as a preacher because I come up and, and I don't think I've ever, most of you have never even heard my testimony. And I thought about this and and I thought I usually just preach messages, but I haven't shared my testimony. I, I, need, I need to never ever get tired or get weary of sharing my testimony. And, and I've not shared my testimony enough with people because God brought me out. God did so much for me. And, and let me just tell you, <laughs> next month, April, 41 years that I have been serving God. 41 years. That ought to tell somebody you can make it. Amen. 41 years. Amen. And, and, and so I must always remember where he brought me from. And if it were not for him, where would I be? And it would be so, I thought about that. That would be so, if he had not come, amen. I call it intervene in my life, or if I had not gotten Christ in my I, I have no idea where I would be today. Naomi wouldn't be my wife, my kids wouldn't be here, and, and we wouldn't be here, none of us would be. And, and, and always remember where God, never ever forget the whole or wh wherever he brought you out of. We, at district convention, um, I was watching and worshiping and and Pastor Culver used to be Bishop Culver, but now he's pastoring the church. And he had his guitar up there, and he's just going, and he's singing, and he's jumping around. He's, and I looked at him, and he seemed so, so happy. And you know what he told me? He says, Chuck, when I get up there, he says, before I even pick up my guitar, I always stop, and I look up to heaven, and I think about where God brought me from what God has done in my life and how he has saved me, filled me with his Holy Spirit. And even though I've got health issues, I've got financial or whatever problems I have in my life, I push them aside and I forget about them. And I just focus on how he saved me, how he delivered me, how he helped me. Amen. And, and, and man, I think we need to learn how to do that. So that we can have the joy of the Lord and be able to tell others what God has done for us. See, your testimony. What was your life like before you met Christ? Now, when you share your testimony, don't spend a half hour on that. And then five minutes on what your life was like after you met Christ. You just, what your life was like, how you came to Christ... And then what difference Christ has now made in your life. And everybody has a testimony. And everybody can share their testimony. But don't let us ever forget where God brought us from. God help me if I ever forget how he delivered me. How he set me free. How he gave me such a beautiful wife and family. Gave me the privilege of being a pastor. And did all the... I, I, I'll tell you what. All of you guys and girls in here today, any of you could probably go further than me 
I, I, if you would have seen me before I got saved, you would have said, it's impossible. I had a guy come visit the church in Fresno, and, and I walked over greeting people, and I said, hi, I'm Chuck. And he looks at me, he's, and he looks again, he's just, are you Chuck Tuck? And his jaw dropped. I said, I sure am. And he was, I could, could I was the mo voted most likely, amen, to be a numbskull in high school, Amen. And here he's, he was shocked that I was a... Don't ever let us forget where God has brought us from. <laughs> Jesus said, you can't go with me because I got something. You need to go out and you need to tell your friends and your family what Christ has done for you. And look what he did. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him. And all marveled. They were marveled. Pe people will marvel at what God has done for you. Now, you, this guy was demon-possessed. This guy was a mess. He cried day and night. He cut himself with stones. And when they saw the change in his life, it says they saw him sitting, in, sitting clothed and in his right mind, and they were totally, totally shocked by that. Can I tell you, people will see the change in your life. Remember the woman with five husbands? I call her the five striker. She either had, amen, a bad attitude or, or bad luck. I don't know what it was. But she had had five husbands. Jesus met her at the well, told her about living water. He says, you drink of this water here, you'll thirst... If you drink of the water I give you, you will never thirst again. And it will be a bubbling well, bubbling up inside of you that will last for the rest of your life. Do you know why I haven't quit and given up yet? Because there's a bubbling well on the inside. There is a power, it's almost like a nuclear reactor inside of the born again Christian. And yes, we get beat up, yeah, we go through struggles, but the Holy Spirit bubbles back up again on the inside. And, and he renews us and he strengthens us. And, and she says, if, if you drink of this water, you'll never, you'll never ever want that water again. Because the water that I'm going to give you is living water. And it will stay with you forever. She got saved. She got so excited. She went back to her little village or city, whatever it was, and started telling all the men and people in that city. And they all came out because of her testimony. All these people came to Jesus. Amen. And they got saved because this woman went and said what Jesus had done for her. And not only that, but I'm going to tell people about the goodness of God. I'm going to tell it. I, I, let me just say, tell it right now. <laughs> let me just say this. I know one thing for sure, without any doubt, and that is this, is that we serve a good, good, good God. Right. Some, <laughs> some people have a distorted view of God, and they think that God is... Some big old guy out there with a stick that's just waiting to beat them over the head. Or that God's a killjoy and wants to take away all their fun and give them a miserable life. Can I tell you, that's nonsense. Anything that God will take out of your life, it's for your own good. And he'll replace it with something ten times better. God will do amazing things, amen, in our lives. He's not coming to be a killjoy and to take away, God, you don't have anything that he wants to take away that's of any value to him. He only takes things away. He doesn't want it. He doesn't need it. He doesn't even need you. He does it because he loves you and he wants what's best for you. Why well, sound like a father talking to his children right now? He wants what's best for you. Is there something in your life you feel God tugging at your heart to let that go? Can, can I tell you, please let it go. Let it go. Because God will have something. It, it could be that very thing you're wanting, you're longing for. And you're praying about and you want God to give that to you and fulfill that in your life. But God's dealing with you to let go of something far less important. Something that really doesn't even matter that much, but you keep holding on to it. Can I tell you, give it your best shot, man. Let go of it. And that could be the key to God now saying, okay, 
When I asked you to let go of that, you did. Now I can entrust you and give this to you. And maybe it's just some little things that are keeping us from getting that heart's desire. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he'll give you the desire of your heart. But he can't give you that desire if you're going to hold on tight with everything. You ever hear about how they used to tra trap monkeys down in the Amazon? They would take a coconut. They cut a hole in the top and they'd put a bunch of food in there. And the monkey would come and it would be tied up. Monkey would come and put his hand to get the food. When he got the food, he held on so tight to all that stuff. His fist, his hand was too big to come back out of the hole. And they would capture the monkey because he held on to that food too tight. And if we hold on to things in our lives too tightly that God wants to remove, amen, it's going to be a, it's going to keep us from having what God really wants to do in our lives. And this has nothing to do with my message. This is the Holy Spirit. So I pray you hear God speaking that you would be willing to give it up to God. Somebody say, give it up. Give it up. Amen. So I'm going to tell it, say, see Psalm 68, 19 says that blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Amen. Daily. That means day. By day, by day, not annually, not monthly, not weekly, day by day, there is not a day that God doesn't bless us with benefits. He daily loads us, and benefits, that includes his blessing, his presence, his peace, his joy, the power of his Holy Spirit, but ultimately, it represents God himself. That's the main benefit that he gives to us every single day. Can I tell you, God gives us benefits. But I like, like what it says. He daily, day by day, great benefits, better than working at General Motors. And then also, amen, he loads us with it. When I think of loading, I think of a truck load. What God is saying, I don't just give you a little blessing. I give you truckload of blessing. I want to bless you so much that you have not only enough for you, but it will spill over and you'll be a blessing to everyone else in your life. God says, if I can get it through you, I can get it to you. I want to bless you and load you with truckload of benefits in your life. I'm so glad God's not stingy. And his truckload is bigger than your truckload. Everybody say bigger. And here's the biggest thing, I think, when we talk about the goodness of God. And I, 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 I saw this from a new perspective because I've always looked at the scripture. It says, know you not that the goodness of God leads a man to repentance. And, and this is true. I, I didn't have it wrong necessarily. But God keeps being good to people when they don't deserve it. Amen. He, he was good to me before I even said yes to him protected me from death on motorcycle crash. I mean, he, he, he did all kinds of good things even before I served him. And so what I've always thought and said is that the goodness of God, someday we're going to wake up and say, God, you've been so good, and that's going to lead us to willingly repent and serve him. And that's true. But looking at it how I'm looking at it today, a little different angle is that how do I know that God is a good God? One of the indicators that says that God's a good God, yeah, he benefits and all that, is that he's constantly trying to lead me to repentance. And because he keeps pulling me toward him, can I tell you what that does? That signifies to me he is so, so good to do that because if God didn't keep pulling us toward him, none of us would be here serving him today. He has reached out to you, amen. If you put a little distance between you and God, he's come to you. And, and if you're here today, the God is good, and what he's doing is he's leading you to receive Christ. If you haven't received Christ, that God pulling you in, God sharing his love, sharing the gospel message, the good news with you, God is leading you to accept Christ, amen, and to serve him. For the rest of us, there's always things that God wants to do in our lives that are a little greater, a little deeper than what we're experiencing. And to do that, we have to let go of some things. And as we, amen, follow Christ, he's always leading us into deeper water. He's trying to get us to become 
big, big test to come, become more like Jesus Christ. And, and so he does that by leading us constantly. Amen. Be, because sometimes God wants to not only take the sin. I'm not talking necessarily about all the bad things. But he says lay aside the weight, the sin and the weights. Sometimes he wants to remove things that aren't necessarily bad. They just weigh us down. And when he can lead us to let go of those things. Man, a lot of let going in this message. I didn't have any idea I'd be talking about letting go of all this stuff. God must want us to let go. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and so the, it, I, I thank God for the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. Do you know how precious? You know how I can tell you that God is so good? Because he sends the conviction of the Holy Spirit to our lives. And when we're going in a dangerous direction, we're doing something that's going to lead us away from Christ. Immediately, that, 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 the conviction of his spirit starts working on us. And we get this feeling in our heart, that's, oh, I shouldn't do that. Well, that's not the right thing. Can I tell you, that is God speaking to you and God trying to lead you back, amen, to himself. And it's the goodness of God, amen, that leads us to repentance because he's such a good God. We want to repent and serve him and lay down things in our life. But also, he's good because he keeps drawing us. He keeps convicting us. He keeps working on us. So I'm telling you today, we serve a good, good, good God. And lastly, just one last thing, and I'm closing, is that I'm going to tell, tell others about how powerful the word of God is. And I really don't have time to preach this, but the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of of God. Do you know what that means? That means that our lives are going to be affected in proportion to how much we know of this book and apply it in our lives. If we violate the laws in this book, we're going to hurt for it. If we align ourselves with what God says in this book, we're going to be blessed by it. And he says, I'll bless you when you go out. I'll bless you when you come in. But that's not for everybody. That's for those who put this word in their life. Let this be the rule book. You want to know what absolute truth is? Don't look at CNN. Don't look at Fox News. Don't look at the local paper. This is the only source of absolute truth there is. This should be your guide for life. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, who brings forth his fruit in his season. And nothing, amen, that he does, amen, will be bad. But everything he does shall prosper, amen. I'm going to tell people, if you want to be blessed, this is the secret right here of being blessed. If you want to go further, amen, read the book of Proverbs, get some wisdom in your life, amen, and become wiser, become stronger, amen. Can I tell you, this is like hooking up your iPhone to your battery charger every night, and I, I can be down, I can be tired, and I read this book, and man, I'll read something, and my, my lip will start quivering, tear will start tearing up in my eyes, and I know God is speaking, and all of a sudden, I'm not that tired anymore, and I'm energized. This word is powerful. This word is life. And I, we need to tell people how good the word of God is. And, and here's really why. Because one day we will all stand before God. And when we stand before God, we can't say, well, God, you know, I need a break on that because maybe you could, you know, take care of me on, on that. But he says, I'm not, Jesus says, I'm not going to judge. What's going to judge is the word of God. We will stand before God and we will be judged by the words of this book. This is what's going to judge us right here, what God says in this book. And so we need to tell people, amen, when we get an opportunity that the word of God, amen, should be a blessing in their life. They should put this in their heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart. It says, it says, how therewith shall a young man clean up his act? He says, by taking heed to the word of God. You want to clean up your act? Right here. Right here. This is how you clean up your act. I got to tell it, though. You see, I think we as a church, we've been not vocal enough for the things of God. And I just want to encourage us today. 
I'm going to tell it. We got to tell it. We got to tell it. We got to tell God, thank you with our praise and worship for being so good to us. We've got to tell others what God has done for us and the difference he's made in our lives. We need to tell others how good God is, and we need to tell others how beautiful the word of God is. Amen. There's good preaching at Harbor Light Church. Come down to the church and hear the word of God, and it will bless your life. It will change your life. It will make a difference in your life. Amen. Let's stand all across the building. Give me a minute just to pray, if you would, please. Father, we exalt you right now. We give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, you know what you want to accomplish in each heart and in each life. And I pray right now your Holy Spirit would sweep through this building. God, that you would just move, that you would just stir our hearts. God, you're so, so good to us. And I believe today you're leading us to repentance, Lord. God, help us to say yes to you. And with your heads bowed just for a minute, if you're here today and you would say, Pastor, today, I'm not in a right relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and I need to accept him as my Lord and Savior and ask him to forgive me of my sins. And, uh, if that's you, with no one looking, would you just lift your hand and say, pray for me, Pastor. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Thank you. Thank you for your sincerity. I appreciate you. Thank you very, very, very much. As a church, we need to tell it. We need to tell it. These have lifted their hands because they want to come to Christ. But we as a church... Let's take this message to heart. I believe as we open our mouth and begin to thank him with our worship, as we open our mouth and begin to speak the word of God and words of life, as we open our mouths and begin to speak about how good God is, I believe what we're going to see is we're going to see a transformation and a change in our lives and in this church. One of the things we need to tell is we need to tell our Family members, come to church with me next Sunday to see the communion with Jesus. Or better yet, come to church with me on Easter Sunday and see an illustrated sermon. We're going to have bounce houses out there afterwards and food. It's going to be fun. But we need to tell it. We need to tell it. We need to invite people. We need to tell people about how good God is. I'm going to say a little prayer of dedicating our lives for those of you that raised your hands. And if you would help me, church, let's just say a prayer of dedicating our life to Christ for them. If you mean this, say it from your heart and say this prayer with me to receive Christ. Dear Jesus, I invite you into my life to be my Lord and to be my Savior. I ask you to take over completely. Give me a new life. Forgive me of all of my sins and help me to follow you. Amen. I'm going to ask you now, if you would, to be in an attitude of worship and prayer. We're going to have an altar service now. Those of you that would like someone to pray with you, those of you that raise your hands,